Hello there one and all, this is NDM here, welcoming you back to another episode of Let's Play Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Blue Rescue Team. Okay, so in the last episode, we got to Mount Blaze, we finished off the Lapis Cave, and in this episode we are going to start Mount Blaze. Um, did I take out Reviver Seeds from the storage? I just need to check that. No, not store, take. Yeah, I took the revive. oh no I haven't. No, that's what I was going to do. Um, before we take on this dungeon, because it's pretty much vital that we do do that. Because I do not want to die at this next boss that we have to fight, and I'm telling you, the next boss is an absolute nightmare. And, um, it's bad enough that we have Bulbasaur, who is weak against Fire-type, and as I said in the last episode, the boss is obviously a Fire-type Pokemon, because we're going into a Fire-type dungeon. Yes, I am ready. We're not going to go to Rock Path. Rock Path is basically a dungeon, a mini-dungeon, where you can... Train yourself up a few levels before you take on the dungeon, but I think we're strong enough and we have the equipment that we need to take it on, so um, we are going to do this prepared. <laughs> uh, this, uh, the, this dungeon is probably going to get um, cut it down into two separate episodes like I did with Mount Thunder, because this dungeon is a lot longer than Mount Thunder. Um, it's got 15 floors in it, whereas Mount Thunder had 10 floors before you got to the peak, but um, this dungeon has 15 floors before you get to the peak, I think. I'm not sure, I can't remember. It might be 10 floors, I don't know, but we'll find out anyway. I am going to cut down this um, dungeon into two episodes regardless, because it's a long dungeon. I'm going to try and explore every single room as best I can. If I'm really low on health, I'll try and find the staircase as fast as I can, so... So I avoid um, taking any further damage from Pokémon. <clears throat> Alright, I don't have anything that can recover my burns, so... Yeah, I'm going to leave, go up through the staircase. Well, I'm sorry I haven't recorded in a few days, it's just that I've had a really hard week so far this week and I was gone away all weekend so I didn't have the chance to record then but I was really tired yesterday from working too hard and I got home and I just wanted to sleep so I slept and I didn't get the chance to record. So I'm recording today and it's Tuesday June 16th 2015 uh, currently 8.25 p.m. So yeah, I am recording early today, I'm not recording as, like, the time that I usually record, which is around about 10 o'clock at night. <laughs> yeah, I'm recording, I'm, I'm going to try and start record earlier than what I usually do more often. Because then it gives me more time to upload and then you guys can watch the videos and stuff. Because if I upload, because usually I upload around about 1 o'clock in the morning, <laughs> over here. But... Obviously, over in other countries, time's going to be different because, you know, not everywhere in the world it has the same time. Bullet Seed, no, we don't need that. Bulbasaur has already got Bullet Seed, and we don't have any Grass type Pokemon with us at the moment, and I haven't been training up any Grass type Pokemon besides Bulbasaur, so it's no point. No point. Oh, wow, we gained our next level, level 21. See, the EXP in here is actually quite good because now we're getting 100 EXP for every single Pokemon that we kill. So, yeah, and wait, did I get Bulbasaur to level 21 on the last episode? I think I did. And now I just got Pikachu up to level 21. And I've also been playing Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Explorers of Sky, which is a really good Mystery Dungeon game. Um, I will eventually LP that game at some point too in the future. It's just that I've never beat that game before. I've got it on my DS. I got it on DS, you know, a cartridge. I, do I don't. I, I haven't been playing it on the emulator because I don't play games on the emulator for fun or you know to play them just because you know I mean if I don't have the game and I can't get hold of the game for whatever reason like if it's not on eBay or if it was never released over in the UK um, I would download it on an emulator and I'll play it that way because it would probably be the only way that I can play it but I think N64 games you can actually buy those cartridges like American cartridges, and I think they will work on a European Nintendo 64. Uh, I haven't tried it because I don't have any um, American N64 cartridges that I could put into my European N64. 
Uh, I imagine they do work though, it's just some consoles don't recognize um, foreign game cartridges. I can't think of it, I can't think of one, but I know that there are some out there that don't recognize. Um, probably the Nintendo Entertainment System would be one of them because you have to, like, if you want to play Japanese games on. Um, on a Nintendo Entertainment System, like an American and a European Nintendo Entertainment System, you wouldn't be able to play it because you need this um, Famicom, which is uh, the Japanese version of the Nintendo Entertainment System. Same with the SNES, but the SNES, you can actually play foreign games on easier than you can with um, Nintendo Entertainment System, than the Ni Nintendo Entertainment System. Don't ask me how, but I do know it's a lot easier to play those games on the console than what it is with the Nintendo Entertainment System. Speaking of which, they have released Mother 1 on the eShop now. Ah, I spilt my drink. <clears throat> yeah, I'm drinking something different today. I'm drinking Peppermint Cordial, which is a very strong minty drink. It's actually really nice and, and sweet. Yeah, it's got a sweety, kind of minty taste to it. So yeah, if you want to get Mother 1, you can now. It's on the eShop. And if they release Mother 1 on the eShop, which was a fan translation, right? They should be able to release Mother 3, which is also a trans, a fan translation. So yeah. Because they do release Game Boy games on the eShop, obviously. Because I've been playing Golden Sun, which is an awesome RPG game. Uh, it's just that I'm stuck on it at the minute. I'm in one of the dungeons and I can't figure out what I need to do in it. It's a stupid puzzle where you have to stand in the middle of the room and there's this giant statue and I don't know what you need to do with it. It says do something like a swan. <laughs> yeah, you have to act like a swan or something. That's what it said in the dialogue. Something about swans. I just can't figure it out. I've used all my spells. I've used items. I've use special abilities none of that none of those kind of things work um, I've been meaning to look up an online walkthrough of it but I haven't done so and the last time I played Golden Sun was about a few months ago so I haven't been playing any Golden Sun recently uh, I should be getting back to it soon but I'm kind of getting a bit distracted with uh, Explorers of Sky at the moment <laughs> Because there are a lot more dungeons in that game than there are in this game, and there are a lot more Pokemon to recruit. And some of the features in that game are a lot more easier to um, manage than what this game um, apprehends. You know, recruiting Pokemon in this game, you can only have four party members on your team, right? And then if you have four party members on your team, that's your capacity. You can't recruit any more Pokemon until... Um, you go into another dungeon again with like three Pokemon and then you recruit another Pokemon in your party and so on and so on like that. Well, in Explorers of Sky, if you have four team members on your team, you can still recruit Pokemon and then you send them back to the friend area or, well, in this case, I don't really want to spoil it because if I say where you send the Pokemon, it's going to kind of be a bit spoilery. So I'm not going to, um, ex I'm not going to say exactly where you um, take them, but you can put them into storage, as I would say, <laughs> would be another word for it. Yeah, put them in a storage instead of, you know, not being able to recruit them. <laughs> Makes things easier. All right, okay, I need to use an Orenberry to get some health back here. Bulbasaur is burnt, but he is not low on health, so I'm not really worried about that. Yeah, Bulbasaur will take 5 damage from the burner heal, but his health will recover in time before he takes another hit. So we're on floor 6. Uh, I, I reckon we'll get to about floor 9 or 10, and then I'll end it off and we'll finish off the rest of the dungeon in the next episode, including beating the boss. I'm not sure if there's a long cut. Wow, I've just been walking around not noticing that my stomach's empty. And all of a sudden, it just comes to me that, yeah, I need to eat an apple, huh, to get rid of my hunger. Yeah, and Explorers of Sky and uh, Darkness and Time, 
you do have to eat apples so yeah that's still um, compulsory you need to eat apples to get through dungeons unfortunately all right okay so sorry about that <laughs> all right quick attack paralyzed him okay I don't know what I was actually talking about when I lost when I made the cut earlier on so was there something about explores the sky maybe <laughs> I think it was I'm not sure I was just talking about how addicting it is and yeah Well, the good thing is we're getting there. We're on four seven now, so we're almost at the boss. I was hoping we get a few levels through this dungeon, but that's looking very unlikely at the moment. Anyway, I need to check how much more EXP we need until we gain our next level. Let me just see for a second. Yeah, we need a lot of experience points until we gain our next level. Uh, and I don't think we're going to get it through here, but we might be able to get it in the next dungeon. Or when we fight the boss. That would be pretty cool. Because the boss battles always give like 600 EXP or 700 EXP every single time you kill it. Because um, Zapdos gave us... I think Zapdos gave us... 300 or 600 EXP when we beat him, so obviously um, this next boss is going to give us uh, a lot more EXP than what Zapdos did. Well, I'm hoping anyway. Um, I can't remember, but I think he does. Oh, he had a peach berry on him. Oh, cool. Well, that helped. Uh, Thunder Wave. Okay, I, I, I'm pretty sure I did bring some Max Elixirs with me in here. I wouldn't go through it. I was going to say I wouldn't go through a dungeon without bringing any Max Elixirs. Well, I already contradicted myself if I said that because obviously I haven't brought any Max Elixirs with me. What the hell, dude? No Max Elixirs? And then I said I came to this dungeon prepared because I bought three Reviver Seeds. Well, <laughs> Um, I can tell you something, I did not come to this dungeon prepared enough, obviously. Because I don't have any Max Elixirs on me, which means I am S-C-R-E-W-E-D, screw. Because now how am I going to fight the- well, actually no, I will be able to fight the boss because when you go to the peak, or when you reach the peak, your PP comes back because you're starting a new part of the dungeon. It's technically like starting a new dungeon-ish, so... Yeah, I'm actually going to try and get through this dungeon as quick as I can now. See, this is why Pikachu needs to learn more offensive attacks, because, like, it's not enough PP either that he has to get through dungeons and stuff. And now I've just been smoke-screened. Um, hoping Bulbasaur doesn't get smoke-screened either. So I just want you to focus on Torkoal, and I'll just absent-mindedly attempt to hit this slugma here. No, don't put Bulbasaur to sleep. That's not fa that's not fair. And I don't think this dungeon provides you with a lot of max elixirs either, so it's one of those kind of dungeons you just really need to trailblaze it through as fast as you can and try not to get... Well, if you are playing as someone else different than a Pikachu, then yeah. I mean, if you're playing as a Pikachu, then you're more than likely going to die, because Pikachu learns attacks that don't have very many, or very much PP on them. So you're always relying on Max Elixirs to get, to get your PP back. Alright, I need to know what this band is. Is it, uh, oh, Power Band, well that will definitely go good on Pikachu, so I'm going to equip that, actually no, um, actually yeah, yeah, I'll keep on Pikachu f for now, um, and ba obviously, well it's kind of obvious what a power band does, it increases your attack power, um, I don't know what a special band does, I think a special band increases your special attacks, you know, 
like special defense, special um, attack, aerial ace. Hmm. I wonder if Pikachu can learn that. No, he can't. I am pretty sure Bulbasaur can though. Let's try um, see if Bulbasaur can learn it. Hang on. No, let me take it, and I'll use it on Pikachu. No, not Pikachu. Well, I can't use it. Well, what's the point then? <laughs> I'll just throw it away. Screw it. I mean, if I can't give it to Bulbasaur and make him use it, maybe he just can't use it because he doesn't or isn't able to learn it. Yeah, that's probably why. Okay, don't put me to sleep now. Yeah, that definitely increases his attack by quite a lot, actually. I want to try and keep that power band as long as I can throughout this whole Fugitive segment. Um, and preferably, hopefully, get Bulbasaur a power band, too. Because then we'll be a lot more powerful. We'll give him a defense scarf. Um, that would be also handy if we came across a defense scarf. Special band I'm not really too bothered with because it doesn't really make a difference. I don't even notice the difference. Um, between, yeah, special band. You don't want that. <laughs> uh, so you can throw that way. And then obviously if there is, well, special attack and special defense have to contribute in some way. But I just don't know how they work. Like what they do. Just, Always confused me with that. That yawn attack is so annoying. Use Razor Leaf Bulbasaur. Otherwise you're gonna get burnt. <laughs> well, it's screwed now. I don't want him to consume a Reviver Seed now, because we haven't even reached the boss yet. Don't use them, but whatever you do, Slugma, please. Come on, Bulbasaur, wake up. Yeah, put him to sleep. Have a taste of your own medicine. <laughs> yeah, you don't like it, do you? Oh, there's some gummies here. I'm going to eat these and get some more IQ points. Yeah, on Explorers of Sky, when you get an IQ level, um, it only... You know you get a full star when you use a gummy and your level goes up in IQ? Well, when you do that on Explorers of Sky, it only gives half a star. So you need to get two stars, to, you need to get two halves of the star com to complete full star. So it's a lot harder to um, gain IQ levels in that game, but you get a lot more abilities in that game as well. Um, so that's why it takes so long for you to max out your IQ on that game. But gummies are a lot more common though. Oh shoot, I'm supposed to end off the episode, aren't I? <laughs> uh, let me just see what this TM is first. Brick Break. Um, let's see if I... Oh, I can learn that. Um, yeah, let's teach it to me. See what... I know Brick Break is a strong um, ground attack, which is super effective against fire, so that's going to help us through this dungeon. So I'm glad I found that. Let me just test it and see if it is super effective. No, it's not. Oh, it's a fighting type move. Well, it does quite a lot of damage, so that's good. I'm not too bothered by that. Yeah, it's a lot better than having Thunder Wave. Okay, guys, I'm going to end off the episode here and continue on the next episode. So in the next episode of Let's Play Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Blue Rescue Team, we shall get to the top of Mount Blaze and fight the boss. So until then, this is Indium saying thanks for watching, take care of what is soon in this video, and goodbye.